What's up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish. Why do I feel so weird right now? <laughs> What's up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. This is gonna be the book cover telephone tag. I think that's what it's called. The book cover telephone challenge? But it's also a tag, I think. I don't know. So the creator of this tag slash challenge is Elizabeth. I'll have her channel linked down below. I watched a bunch of these. One of the first ones I saw was Noelle's from Noelle 7 Pages. So I'm gonna go off of her video. If y'all haven't heard of this, it's basically like, it's basically based, it's basically, it's, oh my God. It's basically inspired by that kids game telephone where you know you go around in a circle, you whisper a sentence, and then the last person who hears it says what they heard out loud. And then ideally it's supposed to be super different from the original sentence because of getting lost in, not translation, but you know what I mean. But this makes it bookish in that you match, not match, but like pair book covers. So, okay. Oh my god, I fucking can't explain this. I think the rule is 10 pairings, including the one you start with, which is the last book from the video that you're basing it on, or the person who tagged you or whatever. No one tagged me in this, but I'm going off of Noelle's, like I said. But I think it's easier if I just show y'all and you'll see, like you pair it based on like vibes or mainly how the cover looks, but like it's either like color scheme or like the vibes of the cover or just like certain elements of the cover, you'll see, okay? We're just gonna get on into it because clearly I'm struggling. The last book that was in Noelle's telephone chain, train, whatever you call it, was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, which I don't own, so here's a photo. I gave this one three stars. I listened to it on audio. I didn't understand the hype. I'm not gonna give it another shot. Maybe I'll read Under the Whispering Door. I heard it has a lot of like sad tropes that might make me a little bit emotional. We shall see, but either way, House in the Cerulean Sea. Why can't I freaking film today? Just freaking talk, bro. God, okay. So this is the cover. The cover that I paired it with. I have all the books in a row behind me because I've had this video planned for weeks, but then I got COVID and didn't feel like filming it. So they've just been ready to go. I paired it with this book, The Drowning Summer by Christine Lynn Herman because of all the pinks and blues in this water over here. Kind of matches the pinks and blues of the house in the Cerulean Sea in the sky. Honestly, I think I did pretty well with these pairings. I'm very proud of how I planned this out. Like y'all will see, y'all will see. Okay, just stay tuned. <laughs> But The Drowning Summer. Do I have to explain what these books are about? I don't think so. I think I'm just explaining my reasonings behind my pairing. Uh, maybe I'll give like a brief thing. I don't know. This is an arc I got from my friend Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm on Instagram. It's a YA. It's sapphic. I really need to read this soon because every time I read the synopsis, I'm so intrigued by it because there's like spirits, ghosts. Is that the same thing? I don't know. There's like a mystery in it and on this like island. Yeah. I gotta read this soon. I'm not a fan of this cover, honestly. I don't really like this art style, but yeah, that is why I paired it with A House in the Cerulean Sea because of the colors of the water, okay? Next. Okay, this one I was pretty proud, with, proud of because the full moons, yep, yep. And the art style is honestly pretty similar. Let me let me back up. What am I doing? Like the eyes of the characters on the covers. I don't know. They look kind of similar to me. Lobizona. I know this involves a werewolf, right? I believe. I don't even know why I bought this. I think I saw it for super cheap. It's about an Argentinian family in Florida. Her surrogate grandmother is attacked. Lifelong lies are exposed. Her mother is arrested by ICE. It's based on Argentinian folklore. Oh, it's witchy and there's a werewolf so that's why I was interested it seems like there's a lot going on and it seems like there would be a lot of social commentary on immigration as well so yeah it says undocumented unprotected unafraid on the front but yeah that is why I connected it because of the full moon. All right, my pairing for this one, this one took me a little bit to figure out, but This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. Um, this is the author of Cinderella is Dead. I connected these because there is a girl on the cover and then foliage 
surrounding her. Sorry for the glare. I'm trying my best here, okay? There's like vines around this girl. And then there's like all these swampy looking things around this girl. Yep, I'm really, I'm doing really bad <laughs> this video. I think it's cause I'm on a time crunch cause I'm going live with Jesse soon for Sapphicathon and I'm just like, I'm trying to get this filmed. This is a sapphic YA fantasy. I think she's a witch and the magic system is like herbal type of thing. Dealing with plants and stuff, botanicals if you will. I wanna read this so badly too and I keep pushing it off. I have a feeling I would love this. I know my, I don't think I've ever opened it. What? That's gorgeous. My friend Christina loved this one. She said the vibes are immaculate. Look at the back. Yep, yep. So I'll get to this eventually and I really like how glossy it is. But yeah, this poison heart. Y'all see the connection? Okay, moving on. The next book, honestly, pretty proud of this one too. Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I think y'all can see, I think it's pretty obvious with the vines being like this violet fuchsia-ish color. I always thought these were tentacles, but it's actually a gate. So yeah, that's cute. It's like the same exact shade of like violet too, so love that for me. So Catherine House is a dark academia. I keep putting this one off too. I've heard mixed things about this, but I have a feeling I'm gonna love this one. It's about this girl who goes to this school. It's like a prestigious school. And yeah, I think she has to like give her phone and stuff and she can't talk about this school. Shit goes down and it's like gothic. And I need to get to this one. I know a couple of my friends love this one, but also I think a lot of people hate this one too for some reason. I don't know, but I need to get to this one. I I have so many books, that, for, especially for this challenge. I was like, wow, I forgot I even own this type of thing, you know? There's that, and then going with the whole gothic gate thing, Ruth Ware's The Death of Mrs. Westaway. I have yet to read, no, I have read In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. But that's the only one I've read and I own like three or four of her other books. And then she's coming out with the It Girl next month. But yeah, so, so the gate on the cover was my obvious. <laughs> connection for this one. Oh, there's like a spider web in there too. That's cute. I really like this cover. I like how gray and gloomy it is. This one is about an inheritance, I believe. I think this lady passed away and then she had this one random girl on her will, but the girl doesn't know why or like it was a mistake or something. And then she goes to the funeral anyway to hear the will and she like takes advantage of it, something like that. Yeah, it was a mistake. I guess she like fakes it till she makes it type of thing. I know a lot of my friends love Ruth Ware. Again, mixed things about Ruth Ware. And I just, I've been in a thriller mood lately but I don't have any, I have one thriller on my June TBR. So maybe I'll do my Ruth Ware vlog that I keep talking about very soon. Every time I look at this cover, I'm like, wow, I wanna read this right now. And then these are more just the gothic vibes. Paired this with Madam by Phoebe Wynn. I absolutely loved this book. This was a five-star book. Honestly, no, it's not. I was like, maybe this is an all-time favorite. No, it wasn't. I don't remember why, but like, I mean, it was great. It was five stars, like I said. So I paired these two because the gothic vibes, the gloomy gray, you know, you get, y'all see it, right? <laughs> And the font is like spiky, see what I mean? Okay, so Madam is about this isolated boarding school. I think it's for all girls. Yeah, a boarding school for girls. I don't know why I love that trope so much, like the broken girls too, and now I'm reading Plain Bad Heroines. I love boarding schools for girls, they're always so creepy. <laughs> this is set in Scotland. Is it Scotland or, s yeah, Scotland. Uh, there are some strange, unjust <laughs> things going on in this school. It is blurbed as, imagine if Donna Tartt and Margaret Atwood got together to write a creepy suspenseful novel about a school for young women in the Scottish Highlands. And that is a perfect blurb about it. It is The Handmaid's Tale meets The Secret History. Absolutely love this one. Highly recommend if you're looking for a dark academia book, if you're looking for like a gothic vibey book in an isolated setting, this is your gal. It will not disappoint. And then I chose The Guest List by Lucy Foley because look, like the Scottish Highlands and then this like isolated situation at the bottom of the cover. I done did good, huh? <laughs> the Guest List, I surprisingly have yet to read. I have read The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, which I actually really enjoyed. I know a lot of people hated that one too. I know this one's super fast and it was all the hype in 2020. I think last year too, like it was still getting a lot of hype. Again, it's an isolated set. It's on this remote island. There's a wedding. There's a guest list. I think it gives and then there were none vibes, right? Like I don't think they die one after the other But like there's someone on the guest list who's a murderer and they're in this again isolated setting 
So one day. This one took me a little longer to choose the pairing for as well, but I just decided to go for the yellow lettering. So I chose Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. I haven't read this book yet either. I've had it for so long. It's a sapphic YA thriller. It looks like it'll go by super quickly. I know Jesse absolutely loves this book and I heard the twists are a fun time. Damn, I really wanna read this now. Why do I do this to myself? It's so floppy too. And I love this cover. I will read this eventually, obviously. I own it, so I will get to it soon. I will read this for one of these Sapphicathon months. And then lastly, I went for The Nature of Witches because of all the hair <laughs> going on on the cover of these books. Y'all see it, the hair is just everywhere. Like, Also, I love this cover and I really wanted to use it and I haven't talked about it in a while, so I wanted an excuse to bring it up again. But yes, both of their hair is just wilded, you know? So, The Nature of Witches was one of my top 10 books of 2021. I know a lot of people thought this was mediocre and I could definitely see that. The writing did get really YA at times. I honestly really like the romance in this at times, like I said, it got super cheesy, like very YA, but at the end of the day, I was squealing for this couple to make it in the end, you know? And hello, yep. We always have to show appreciation for these first edition hardcovers. Thank you so much to Morgan from Morgan Reads for sending this to me on my birthday last year. I have the arc as well. I annotated the shit out of that. That arc was from my friend Christina from A Dose of Cozy on Instagram. This cover is one of my favorite covers ever because it's so autumnal. And yeah, the magic system of these witches was like based on nature, but their powers only work in their assigned season. And then this girl, the main girl, I think her name's Clara. Oh my god, it is. Wow, look at me remembering things. That's how you know I like a book when I remember the main character's name, or any character's name for that matter. But she is a rare breed <laughs> called an Everwitch, and she has her powers year round, basically. She just like doesn't know her potential, and that's basically what it is like coming of age, like learning her powers and stuff. And then it has a lot of lines that you could apply to your life about like believing in yourself and working to your utmost potential. To type of thing. I really, really enjoyed this one. This was five stars. So yeah, those are the books for this challenge. So I want to tag, I'm trying to think who has been tagged already. I know cami has been tagged. Has Sid done this already? I'll tag Sid from Sid Bookworm. You know, I was telling Jesse about it because they gave me so much shit for not tagging them in the contradictions book tag. But then I was telling them about this concept and they were just, I wasn't doing a very good job and they were very confused. So we're not gonna tag Jesse. <laughs> this is an anti-tag for Jesse. <laughs> Naomi. From Naomi's library, Liv from Liv's library, and let's do Deja from Deja's book world. Give you some content, girly. <laughs> All right, if you made it to the end of this video, put a telephone emoji in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and if I didn't tag you and you wanna do this tag and go off of the nature of witches, feel free. Yeah, this would be the book that you start on then, you know? Okay, I think we get it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a great day. Stay safe and stay positive always, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.